Yes, MRC's policy is that we support open access. Um, it's um, our mission to fund research that improves human health. And in order to be able to demonstrate that we're doing that, we need to have um, the outcomes and outputs of our research uh, as freely available as possible. So our broad policy is to encourage um, access to be as wide as possible. And one way of doing that is through open access. Um, we can do it in two ways. One is to encourage our researchers to publish in open access journals, and the other is to encourage them, if they publish in more traditional journals, to ensure that the research is um, put on an archive within six months of the formal publication date. Um, and that's uh, mandatory now for all our research and has been since the 1st of October 2006. The MRC, um, since uh, last year, um, when we introduced this policy, um, has said that we will provide um, funding on research grants to enable our grant funded researchers to do this. So all um, applications that we've received since 1st of October um, have, uh, have been eligible to apply for this funding. We also fund research through MRC units and institutes and we are working with them to ensure that um, they can find the money also from within their budgets. Um, they have the problem, as do many people, that those that have libraries are also currently paying subscriptions to certain journals. Um, so uh, that's a problem that we have to sort out with them. I think at the moment, um, when, applica when applications come to MRC boards and panels, um, relatively few of the publications still are in open access journals. So it hasn't been an issue yet for us. Um, obviously, with our policy, that will tend to increase now. Um, I think um, I would predict that what, what the reviewers will look at is as much the quality of the work as where it's published. We will certainly encourage our reviewers to do that in the guidance that we give them. Um, sometimes researchers and reviewers are the same people, of course, and maybe their own worst enemies. And it may be that there's a sort of cultural shift that will have to happen that may not happen very quickly. But certainly we'll encourage people to look at the quality of the work um, that's been done previously rather than specifically in which papers it's been published. The MRC doesn't formally use impact factors in any of its assessments. Um, they may be used informally by some of our reviewers, um, but it's not easy to know whether they're doing that or not. We certainly don't ask them to. Um, impact factors um, are only one, or may only be any one of the um, measures that people might use. And um, so even if they are used, they're certainly not a predominant um, way in which we assess quality. I think they're used, um, if they're used at all, they're used more in um, looking at uh, applications for appointments, such as fellowships, um, where one's looking very specifically at the individual rather than at the research project. Uh, and if they're used anywhere, I think that's probably um, the place where they, they, they might have an effect. But again, I think this is something we need to work on with our panels to make sure that um, people look at the quality of the work that's been done previously um, rather than specifically try and um, quantify in any sense the, um, the outputs in terms of which journals uh, and how many over what time. I think one needs to delve deeper than, uh, than those rather potentially superficial measures. Um, the MLC is very interested in, in research across the whole of the research spectrum. Obviously we are minded to take into account scientific opportunity as well as health needs um, and our strategy is to try and do both and marry those two things up together where, po where possible. I think in the next few years we're going to be trying to fund and support more, more research on what is called translation, which is trying to um, ensure that the research we fund at the more basic end of the spectrum um, translates into benefits to people, either in terms of healthcare or in terms of um, behavioural interventions, for example, and prevention. So I think that translation agenda is going to be one of the main things we'll be focusing on.